Hey guys, welcome back to part two. Um, apologies if this camera is sort of slightly jarring and the audio is a bit different to the last video. I'm, I'm balls out busy just trying to get stuff done and setting the other camera up and stuff is a bit of a ball ache. So this is a, yeah, this is a little bit mobile phony. I do apologize. Normal service will resume soon. So this video is sort of about cleaning and preparing the engine to put it back together again i don't want to go down a massive rabbit hole if you if you want to look at the intricacies of building an engine and measuring everything then go and look at the g6r 750 video because i go down a massive rabbit hole with that one what i'll probably do is i'll just share the process of getting the head done so cleaning it vapor blasting it lapping the valves in just and then maybe a little a few shots of a bit of Cerakoting and stuff and just you know what I'm like I'll probably end up talking the bloody legs off you all and I do apologize just yeah if if you don't like long-winded waffly videos then just go and watch somebody else's channel basically um so the head is what I'm going to do with a head initially is I'm just gonna I need to pop the valve stem oil seals out of it get the plugs out of it um, there's some little spring seats down in there that won't come out unless the valve stem oil seals have been removed. So I'm going to do that. I'll just roughly brake cleaner it off. Um, and then I'm going <clears> to <throat> put it in my heated ultrasonic tank and just cook it in there for an hour. Just what that does is before I start trying to clean it and vapor blast it, well, before I start trying to vapor blast it, it will either remove the carbon from the exhaust ports and stuff and the combustion chamber or at least get it make it really soft and easy to blast off and then before I, I start vapor blasting we've got a broken um we've got a broken stud here so we'll do a little bit of it's fairly manky I'll show you how I'm gonna get that stud out easy peasy without snapping it off again um right so heat me tank up my ultrasonic tank and pop it in the tank and then we'll go from there so that's the uh cylinder head in the ultrasonic tank um clearly the fluid's already a bit dirty it's had a couple of sets of carburetors go through there normally if i'm cleaning something i just put fresh fluid in but given that this head is gonna turn that fluid black and horrible and it's gonna need thrown away no sense in using fresh fluid in there um yeah so we'll let this cook for a few hours now and uh, and then it's we'll do some stud broken stud removal on that broken exhaust stud I'll show you how to get that out easy peasy and then once that's done it's just vapor blast it um, clean it off properly make sure there's absolutely no sign of any blasting grit anywhere and then it's lap the valves in used valve stem oil seals and, and it's ready to be reinstalled when the rest of the engines finished um, onwards <laughs> Okay guys, so that's turned to soup. Um, it's been in there a couple of hours. So I'll get it out of there now and I'll give it a, a rinse off with some hot water. And then we'll get that broken stud out and then onto the vapor blasting. Right, so this has just come out of the um, ultrasonic tank. Fairly well, fairly clean. Um, most of the carbon has come out of the exhaust ports um, pretty well degreased it's basically ready for vapor blasting but before I do that I want to get this broken stud out so here's what we're gonna do let me get you a better shot actually so you can actually see what's going on there that's probably a sensible thing to do okay so I know everybody's got a an opinion on this haven't they and on ways they like to do it. I'm I'm kind of keen to make this video. I did watch a, a very well-known engineering workshop, engineering workshop YouTube channel, get a broken stud out, and I just had my head in my hands. It, it just made such a song and dance out of it, and it would have been super easy if he'd used this method. So I thought I'd share this with you. And this is a method a lot of you already know because I read the comments in that particular video and. Everybody seems to have the same opinion as me or a lot of people. So broken stud. Now this, the, the, the way I'm going to show you will work. If the stud has snapped off flush with the surface, you can still make it work. Um, if it's snapped off down in the hole, inside the hole, then you're going to, yeah, you're going to need to 
get the head in a mill and, and machine out the broken bit of stud. But for this, so I've got a nut here, which is slightly too big for the <coughs> for the stud. Enough, enough clearance for the nut to turn. I'm going to chop this stud off, level with the top of the nut. You'll know where I'm going with this, don't you? And I'm going to also going to grind a bit of a point on the stud. I'm going to rest the nut over the top. And now, <clears throat> if you've got a TIG welder, a TIG torch is better for this because you can concentrate more heat in the centre of the stud and melt the stud down into the nut and then with filler rod fill it up. That way you're really concentrating the heat down the centre of the stud. And that process breaks the bond. Obviously the expansion of aluminium and, and steel for the stud are different and it breaks the bond between the two. And then you can also use some map gas to heat the aluminium up, to swell the aluminium up, and that stud will just unscrew. I guarantee you, I've, I guarantee you it will work. Now if you had a stud that was snapped off flush with the aluminium, you've got to be fairly proficient with a welding torch or a MIG. You can do it with a MIG, it's just because the MIG is, you know, you strike an arc and you put in filler rod in straight away, you can't get as much heat into the stud, if that makes sense, but it's doable with a MIG, it's just not quite as efficient. Um, and I used to do it with a MIG before I started TIG welding a few years ago, and I found that when I use a TIG, it's way more successful and seems to work better, but yeah. Your mileage may vary, as they say. So I'm gonna cut that off flush, fucking waffling. I'm gonna grind a bit of a point on it, and then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll try and get an arc shot with the, um, with a camera, but I, I don't, unless I can figure out some way of putting my other welding mask so you can actually see what I'm doing with a welding torch. Um, anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. Right, I'll show you that once it's cut and ground and stuff. Right, so hopefully that's coming out all right on camera. So I've chopped it off and I've put a little bit of a, a point on it, or not a point, but I've chamfered the sides. and rest that on there and then with the, with the TIG torch, I'm gonna hit the center of the stud let that sort of, basically the weld pull will be the whole of that stud inside that nut and then fill a rod and fill it up. The trick to this is having the nut completely flat up against the face. Basically what you want to have happen is when you're trying to undo this, you want to transfer all the torque down inside where it's seized. You, you if you were to weld it, if I was to have can't speak. If I welded the nut to that long piece of stud, there's a there's a fairly good chance I would have got it out, but the the torque transferred down through the stud that's exposed, it's likely to snap the stud off where the stud disappears inside the cylinder head, so it would snap it off flush. By doing this, and this is from Fucking showing my age now, but 20 years of fighting with these things. Having this nut as close to the head as possible before you weld it on or touching the cylinder head surface, that's your, your best chance of getting it out. Anyway, I'm going to weld that up now and I'm going to show you that undo, hopefully, and all will be well. Cool. Right. I'm not using my posh torch for that. Use that jobby. So I've got... I, I don't know whether you're interested in welding, are you? But I've got two torches that I go to. I use this for aluminium and stainless and stuff. Nice um, gas lens and anyway, and then this torch, which is a little bit more, yeah. So I'm gonna use this torch. Okay guys, so 
hopefully that's kind of self-explanatory. So with the TIG torch, it's, I forgot how calming it is to weld steel with a TIG torch. Normally I just use the bloody hot glue gun, the MIG, to um, weld any sort of steel and it's just peaceful and calming. When I'm using the TIG normally, I'm welding aluminium and it's all a bit noisy and anyway, yeah. I digress. So you can see what's happened here. So basically with the TIG torch, and I'm sorry I couldn't get you a, a, a you know, an arc shot close up of the, my camera just fucking freaks out if I try and go near anything that I'm welding. Um, if I was a welder, I'd probably figure a way of filming it, but I can't. Um, so yeah, so basically you hit the stud with what was I on amperage wise? I think I set it to 100 amps, so not super high. I mean, it's quite high, but this is a big, massive heat sink, isn't it? But basically you don't want it super hot. You basically want to be able to hold the torch on there for, well, you, uh, I think I showed you the video in real time, or I will when I edit it, I'll show you the video in real time so you see how long it took. But you just basically work that stud and turn the top of the stud into a weld pull so it sinks down into the nut, and then you just, basically liquefy the inside of the nut as well. So it's all big, one big weld pull and then fill it up and you can see how well it's flowed into the nut. Um, now, I've just put a socket on. So normally what would happen is, fucking hell Jim, get on with it. Normally what would happen is I would immediately after welding, once the red, the, I mean it was white hot almost, wasn't it? Once the redness and, you know, it cooled down a little bit, I'd have whatever I was going to undo it with ready and I'd start trying to undo it while it was super hot. But this is, obviously I've been setting the camera up and dicking around. I think I've been in and had a cup of tea and God knows what, this is stone cold. What I thought I was going to have to do was get my map gas torch and heat it a bit before I started to try and undo it. But I just put this ratchet on it and it's coming out easy peasy. And it's just the process of, you saw all the heat in the, in this nut and in the, in the thread, in the thread, in the stud, it was, you know, it was white hot on the outside here, but all that heat would have transferred down into the stud and it's broken the bond between the, the aluminium and the, let's get this out and show you. So it didn't even need any additional heat. There it is. It's that simple. So yeah, heat is your friend. It really is. Um, now then, like I said, this is part of a GS850 engine build. So we're gonna carry on with that now. So you guys that are watching the how to remove an exhaust stud one, we'll say goodbye to you now. Um, I will probably mention while I'm here, people always ask, don't they? What, what's your equipment you're using? Um, so it's a, um, a, what is it? It's a, yeah, so the welder I'm using is a um, Artec welding, uh, what is it? It's a TIG 170 digital. Um, Artec welder are a company that are close to me in, in Gloucester. Real nice, real nice rig. Um, it's obviously Chinese, like most MIGs these days, but it's it's made to their spec. It is a really nice bit of kit, bit of an investment, but you do get what you pay for, don't you? And then the welding, uh, the welding mask that I use is a Lincoln Electric Viking. Um, it's fairly new to me, this welding mask. It's epic, absolutely epic. Um, it's like, rather than having that green sort of, color when you look through a welding glass it's all like proper colors you can really see the weld pull really really well anyway this isn't a this isn't a welding video is it so anyway that's my take on getting an exhaust stud out oh and i did before we go i should probably mention i did sort of gloss over the what do you do when the stud is snapped off flush with a head well, what you would do is very carefully you'd build some weld up um you need some welding skills but you build the weld up on the end of the stud, you grind it flat so it's nice and clean, build the weld up so you've got a little nipple on the top, drop the nut over and then just basically do what I just did with this one um, and that works just as well. You struggle, obviously when I'm welding, I'm going on aren't I, sorry, um, I've got gravity on my side, I, I turn the 
cylinder head up so the well pull sank down into the obviously if the engine's in the bike and the head's on the you know you you're welding upside down at an angle it can it's doable but it's just you need to be able to weld otherwise it would all go horribly wrong but it's it's perfectly doable if you know what you're doing anyway that's my take on getting a broken exhaust stud out um now it's back to the back to the engine build itself hey guys so i'm just having a i don't want to go massively into this with this engine if you want to understand um what's involved with measuring cylinders properly and more importantly knowing what the piston skirt clearance is go look at the g6r 750 video but i'm just having a quick measure of these and as suspected so the standard bore size is i'll flash it on the screen it's 69 dead um, to 69.020 I think so 69 and 20 microns um, so I'll just have a quick measuring moo in here yeah it's it's dead nuts on there's there's I've already measured them all they're they're I'll measure pistons as well but the, the cylinders measure absolutely perfect so they're gonna get a light hone obviously all cleaned and vapor blasted and stuff and the a light bit of a flex zone, but the barrels are definitely good, as predicted. Okay, so I know I've skipped over quite a lot of stuff, haven't I? There wasn't really a lot to see. I'm sure you don't want to watch me lapping, lapping in valves. So the valves have been lapped in, new valve stem oil seals. It's just all been assembled, basically. I've been waiting on um, just doing the valve clearances without the head on the bike in the same way. These are loose at the moment, in the same way I did with the GSX-R. Um, video just a brief explanation in case you haven't seen that video basically you, you put the camshafts in without the cam chain on obviously because it's not on the rest of the engine and you can just turn the camshafts and do the valve clearances it's, it's just easier than having to faff about with valve timing constantly anyway i've been waiting on some shims to come and they've arrived so i just need to finish doing the valve clearances um and then that's literally ready to be installed uh, yeah, what else is there? I've got some plating to do basically then it's ready to the Cerakote's done on the covers I'll show you a bit of that probably in the next episode um, I'm just Got some bolts. I need to zinc plate before I can start putting it together and we're pretty much Yeah, we're pretty much done in terms of all the cleaning and all the actual um, Measuring and stuff so it's just assembly now. Let me just show you some of the bits I've got for the assembly actually while we're while we're on, while we're on that subject. Yeah, so um I got a full gasket set for it because I couldn't you can get some of the gaskets individually still, but some of them you can't get. So I ended up getting a decent quality gasket set. Well, decent quality made in China, isn't it? But it's it's the best you can do, really. So that's the gasket set. I've uh, got a new cam chain for it, got a new clutch for it, um, oil filter, plugs, what else we got? We've got various oil seals, cylinder head nuts, um, that's for the cam chain tensionary thing, nuts there, got piston rings, uh, what do we got there? Oh, a couple of washers for that cam chain thing, some cylinder head washers, some new ones. Uh, what else we got some oil seals you get the idea just general oil seals gaskets new clutch new plugs new cam chain nothing massively exciting what we've got in this bag here oh just some sort of cosmetic -y bits that's a, a plug for the end of the oil gallery um, the, they're sort of chrome plated and yeah it would look that the rest of the engine's gonna look so new that little bits like that rather than faffing around plating it because it's a chrome plate and I can't do chrome I can only do zinc 
let's just get uh, what do we got in here just more little gaskets that's for the oil pump cover beyond the clutch yeah nothing highly exciting but that's what we've got and then I guess finally for this um, part two is it we're on now um, yeah pistons are ready to go they were ultrasonically cleaned and which got rid of most of the carbon certainly cleaned up all the ring lands and stuff and there was a little bit of carbon left on the piston crowns so they've just had a light dusting over in the vapor blaster um, just the piston crown though not the rest of it I talk about that in the GSX-R 750 video but yeah just the piston crown and the rest of them are ultrasonically clean got new rings the gudgeon pins wrist pins are going to be reused new circlips I think that'll do it for part two guys it's um I've got to have 20 minutes worth of yeah I'm going to struggle to keep this down to 20 minutes I would think um, I'll show you the rest of the bits and pieces so the Cerakote as the engine gets bolted back together you'll see all the other little bits and pieces anyway thanks for thanks for watching guys see you part three